Uh, my name is Richard Hamilton. Uh, I work for the Nature Conservancy, which is a non-for-profit environmental organisation. Uh, my area of specialty is uh, coral reef fisheries, and most of my field work is conducted in the Solomon Islands and in Papua New Guinea. For the last couple of years, we've been working on a, a big parrotfish. It's the giant parrotfish, known commonly as the bumphead parrotfish. It's, it's the giant of, of all parrotfish. It reaches over one and a half metres in length and probably quite well over 50 kilograms. And it's, it's a keystone species. It's, it's very important in healthy systems. It's the main bio which means that it produces a lot of sand and eats a lot of coral. A large adult parrotfish will eat about 5,000 kilos of coral every year. So they produce a great deal of sand and they also clear out areas which allows for the, uh, the new settlement of, um, of new coral recruits. It's been overfished in a lot of areas in the world. It's got a wide geographical distribution, but it, its numbers are going down very rapidly. Um, for all the normal reasons, it's, it's long lived, it's naturally rare because of its size and it has this really uh, quite unfortunate behaviour of sleeping in large groups, the same schools which it naturally forms during the day and that makes it very very vulnerable to, uh, to night spearfishing. And, and recently it was listed um, on the IUCN red list as vulnerable. For the last two years um, we've been running a fairly large project here with uh, national and provincial fisheries and also the local fishermen in the Kia district of Isabel province, Solomon Islands, and we've been focusing uh, exclusively on the um, bumphead parrotfish fishery. The Kia district of Isabel province probably is still uh, one of the most rich areas in the world for bumphead parrotfish and that's partly because they have both a very large area of lagoons which is critical for the nursery stages of that species and also very extensive outer reefs which um, provide the food for the adults. The life cycle of these, these fish is, you know, they're long lived, they're living to about 40 years old. They, they mature at about seven or eight years of age at which stage they're a big fish, they're about 60, 60 centimetres in length. The adults spawn on the outer reefs and we've, we found out through the research that the spawning is uh, throughout the year but it has a very strong lunar component, they're spawning just prior to the new moon. Um, they, they spawn within their normal school, so often in the early morning there'll be a school of 30 or 40 parrotfish and they rush up and like a lot of fish they release the eggs and the, and the sperm into the water so it's fertilisation within the water itself. And then these fertilised eggs um, will actually float somewhere out there in the, in the great out known for about around four to five weeks we think and develop into little larvae. When they've reached uh, you know, four or five weeks in age that's when they'll recruit back into the lagoonal areas and try and settle in some suitable habitat. So after about four or five weeks, they recruit back into the lagoons at, at a very small size. I mean, just this week we've been surveying them and we've been seeing little bumphead parrotfish, which are you know, no more than two centimetres in length. And, and one of the things we found out in this research is that the, the recruitment habitat of these species is extremely limited. It's much more limited than we used to think. They're only recruiting into these really, really high coral cover um, in a lagoonal fringing reefs. So environments that most people don't look in for obvious reasons, you know, they're dirty, you get crocodiles in there, they're not, they're not sort of spectacular dive sites or anything like that, but they're really, really rich um, in all sorts of juvenile species of fish. And, and the, the, the bumphead parrotfish, unlike a lot of species, seems to almost exclusively only recruit into that habitat. So it, to some extent, that would explain why you have so many uh, bumphead parrotfish and also fish in general here in, in the Kia district. It's just, these nurseries are just the factory, they're just churning over these um, new, new fish into the system. The Solomons is, is pretty, pretty rich in bumphead parrotfish historically. It's probably one of the areas in the world where there is still quite large numbers of bumphead parrotfish. It's formed an important fishery in the Solomons or part of a subsistence fishery for you know hundreds of thousands of years but probably in the last 40 or 50 years it's become more and more commercialized and that relates to the ease of capture which is um, night spearfish being able, being able to find large numbers at night and it also relates to the fact that just the, the large volume of return. Most, most coral reef fish are small but with bumphead parrotfish approaching 40 or even 50 kilos per individual and sleeping together in groups, um, it's not unusual in areas where they're still fairly healthy to see catches which exceed 600 kilos in a night. Um, and it's, it's, it's pretty important for the local economy. It probably puts about a quarter of a million Solomon dollars into the local economy each year. I guess when, we, when, we started, when I started this research, um, I expected to find a fishery which was under pretty heavy 
uh, fishing pressure and probably not all that healthy. A um, couple of things that surprised me too really, uh, first the fishery is, is, is healthier than I expected. But the real big surprise and the really unexpected outcome of this uh, research has been that we had no concept before this of how important these uh, inner lagoonal nursery areas were for fish fish and how heavily impacted they are by land-based practices. So in this, in this Kia district where there's been a lot of logging, in the areas which are logged, all the nursery habitat is gone. It's just, it's just destroyed. The sedimentation happens from logging. I mean, you, you, uh, you cut down the trees, you pull the trees, the logs down to the logging ponds, and all of a sudden, every time it rains, you have all this red clay mud rushing into a, a lagoonal system, which already sustains a lot of sedimentation, but it's kind of held in check by these extensive mangrove systems. But they're right at their carrying capacity. And if you take it off the topsoil, and then you open up an avenue for all that soil to run into the sea, then it just totally swamps the whole system. We, we've, we've been diving in some of these areas where there's logging and it's, it's not that pleasant, you know. There's just, there's silt this high over everything and even the big massive bomby parietes, which are probably the hardiest coral on earth, are starting to die as well. They're suffering from disease. It's, all, it's, it's, it's in a poor, poor state. We, we didn't really think about the logging uh, issue when we started this research. I certainly didn't. I mean, I've seen and read about declines in bumphead parrotfish in a lot of places in the Pacific. And, it's, it's interesting because uh, myself and everyone else who has ever worked on bumphead parrotfish has always attributed those declines exclusively to fishing pressure. And while there's no doubt that they are vulnerable for fishing pressure, I think the really surprising thing, or well, the unexpected thing that we discovered in this um, research was that it's these juvenile habitats, the destruction of those habitats through poor land-based practices is probably largely what's driving the demise of that species in many places. That was a big surprise and, and, and for me it, it really changed the way I thought about how to manage these fisheries. You really do need a ridges to reefs approach. You need to look at controlling land based practices if you want to have healthy fisheries. So in the last two weeks we've done a survey exclusively in the nurseries and we've compared that logged area with this other island which we're on now, Barifa, which is the last large unlogged island in the whole of Isabel province. And it's, there's been a lot of pressure, there's been nine timber rights to log this island over the last 20 years. The last one was just defeated this April and we wrote and campaigned against not logging that area based on its importance for the fisheries. But it's, it's, it's black and white. You know, we did, we did 20 surveys or 100 transects in the logged area and we didn't see one juvenile bumphead parrotfish and all the reefs were dead or in a very, very poor state, a lot of siltation. And then we've done the same thing here in the last week and it's just like, it's a completely different world. There's, there's baby bumphead parrotfish everywhere. So I would say uh, I probably got it wrong about 10 years ago when I figured the decline in bumphead parrotfish in the western province was all over fishing. It was almost definitely a combination of destruction of the nursery areas from logging, poor land based practices and, and also uh, heavy fishing on the adult stocks. The really important take home message is that in these areas where you have these incredibly rich marine areas and they're, they're rich in part or a very large part because of these very productive nursery areas for a whole range of, of juvenile fish. They already, they're already under pretty heavy natural sediment loads. If you log those islands, you'll lose your fishery. The lagoon systems which support that, the high coral reef systems which support those juveniles, they'll disappear. They'll be the first ones to go. And in 10 or 15 years, you won't have any adult fish on the outer reef either. So it's, it's, it's a strong message. It's a, it's a ridge to reefs approach. It's one we're trying to promote. Whereas, you know, stuff flows downhill. You can't, we could, we could do all the management we liked on the outer reef. We could set up MPAs, we could put in a, a closed season when they're spawning, but if logging goes ahead on this island, we'll still lose, we'll still, we'll still lose that resource. It'll be, it'll be gone in 20 years time because there will be no new fish coming, coming back in to change the ones being taken out. So if you're interested in preserving your fisheries and in having healthy fisheries, you have to also look at good sustainable land-based practices and areas like this and this is probably the richest area for fish anywhere in the Solomon Islands it's remarkable just don't log it you know um, just don't or, or you'll you'll lose your land resources and you'll lose your fish as well